Hello everybody, welcome to Monday the 13th of February 2017. I'm Doc Eon and I'm showing you off what I've finished painting since last week. A grand total of four models. Um, first off, the two remaining sea creatures, the sea hag and the... Yeah. This is how I painted her. Oh. Turned out a bit more gray than I was planning originally, or brown perhaps. I, I wanted more green originally in the body. Now it's a kind of a brownish green, but these things happen. This one is, is, is a clear green though, these sort of lizard folk or something. Uh, I hope I differentiated the green on the turtle shell shield enough. We have uh, the Parangalan, who, let's see if you can tell, I've added some blood and gore effects to the innards, they're dripping blood, and it's kind of subtle, but there's supposed to be some blood running, running from the corners of her mouth as well, uh, as if she's bitten into something. Uh, and it has the, this glistening sheen, which is intentional. Uh, finally, we have a pirate lady with two swords, one out, one scabbarded. Uh, now, the sheen here is because the varnish has not 100% fully dried. It takes a long while to do that. It's going to be a little bit more matte in a few hours or by tomorrow, but I didn't want to wait showing it to you. I wanted you to see it right now. So a, a um, modest harvest of minis this week. There will be more in the coming week because as I have mentioned, I have a lot of, I'm gonna have a lot of free time. Uh, yeah, except for, well, Sunday is probably gaming day, but otherwise I'm gonna paint at least a couple of hours every day. So you might see a uh, faster progress. Let's see what I want to progress on. Here's the older models. Well, the models that have been in the works for a while. Out of the parts, it's just so few left. Uh, I've done the wings. Uh, kind of a subtle blend of grays, I think. And I'm, I'm just kind of not sure about what colors to make because at the moment she's kind of red, white, and blue. I that's purely by accident. I I wasn't consciously going for that. And and these these areas that are still kind of light gray. I'm I'm, I'm wondering what to make out of them. Uh, if if I should go with something dark because the blue and the red are very light. Um, or if it's you know just do. Uh, the complete trifecta of primary colors and do do yellows or add more metallics again choices 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 lots of choices uh, with this guy I have started working on the metallics a little bit uh, not gotten very far and just on these guys I've done the boots <laughs> that's the new thing that's happened and that's about it but work continues. Oh, and um, I don't remember if I showed you. I, I've done the wagon. And I've, I've actually completed the horse. Now the horse is also just shades of brown, but they're different shades of brown. So when you put it next to the wagon, there's a contrast still between the different types of browns. They look a bit different. And for the base, I've started this. I, I've I've textured this with some acrylic paste and some grit, and currently the glue to hold the PVA to hold down the grit is drying. It'll have it dry until tomorrow, then I can prime it and start painting it. And I've, I've sort of tried to create, f these furrows are supposed to represent wagon ruts. They're perhaps a bit too narrow, uh, not entirely realistic, but you know. The idea is that the cart or wagon is traveling down a path where it's been before, so it's not going off-road, there are wagon ruts. Anyway, let's uh, have a look at the stuff that I said I would start up. 
Rawr. So we've jumped into a time machine and gone back a couple of days. And the reason being, I wanted to show you uh, some of, mostly work on this purple worm while still in progress before it's fully assembled. Mostly I wanted to praise Gale Force 9 because um, I've given them some crap for their human minis before, but when it comes to monsters, they really know their thing. And I particularly like how this model is um, designed to go together without basically any need for gap filling. So the main part of the body comes up out of the ground like this, and it just fits in like this. And well, I mean, of course there's a gap here, but of course there would be because it's it's a creature bursting up out of the ground and it is um, it would not be completely flush with the side of this hole. There would be a slight distance. You, you know, you could sort of wonder why there's a gap here, but nobody's going to see that. It's going to be dark. And I, this head port where it fits onto this, where, which way does it go? Let me see. So it's like that. And then it's like, hmm. This, yeah, that's it, like that. Uh, you see the scales overlap so that it hides the join. There's no need for gap filling there either. And finally, with these two parts, they go together, you can see the gap here, but you know, you can't see that. Numbers can angle it like that. The only part where there was a visible gap was at the back of the mouth. You can see a dark line there. Uh, previously you could see through to the gray plastic and I simply put some green stuff on the inside of that. That's the only gap filling I've done. And you don't really need anymore. And just doing this is overkill. I, I didn't really need to do that. It's just my, the completionist in me. So, yeah. Good work, Gale Force 9, on this model. Uh, while I'm at it, I can show you where I'm at with a few of the others. I've Attach the head to this guy, put a little pin in here so that I'm going to use to attach this. I don't think I need a pin for the hand. It, it has a little nub here and there's a hole there. I, I'm hoping that's going to be enough to hold it with some super glue. And I've started, I pressed a uh, base for him, green stuff and one of my basing stamps. Um, I'm going to let this cure, this is still soft, and then trim the edges, clean off the Vaseline that I used to, uh, to get a clean release from it. Uh, the dwarves, I put on their bases and smooth them out with some green stuff, and once that cures, I'm going to add uh, grit and so forth. But you'll see that when we get back in the time machine. And here we can see these four new models, fully prepped and primed. Um, oh, the black has run a bit here. I, I just poured some black down into this crack to make it really dark. And uh, apparently I tilted the model before that had fully dried and so some of it ran out on the lip here. Oh well. Uh, now this guy I primed a slightly darker shade of gray because he's going to this is a, he's a full metal ogre anyway um, so I'm gonna base coat all of his armor in black in any case you know I could have primed him black actually but it it's 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 easier to uh, apply black coat to all of the armor than it is to uh, highlight up the face from black I think. I mean, that's my personal preference, but anyway, here's the dwarves, primed light gray, and the other one, classical dwarves with a lot of gear on them. Yeah. So there it is. Go. Because I always need to have some new projects on the go, at least, you know, looking to start some new projects, even if I don't manage to actually 
actually start them in, by next week, I, I, I need to know what I, is in the pipeline. So I have a small selection of minis here. We have the Young Fire Elementalists from North Star, which are a sort of pseudo marketed as, as Frostgrave minis to female mages. Uh, we have the Pact Master of Katapesh from Reaper's Pathfinder line. Apparently Katapesh is some sort of country in the Pathfinder role-playing game world, Galarian, and they have some people called Packmasters. This, if this is a dude, he's really big. If he's a human, I mean, not some sort of ogre or giant in, 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 a, in a weird mask. I'm not sure what the Packmasters of Katapesh are supposed to be, honestly. I'll have to look up uh, some, some painting reference if I want to paint it in the official colors, which I assume there are. And finally, we have this another hassle-free monster, the Bugharoth, which is a big demon in a sort of come-at-me-bro pose. Uh, it comes with one of these lift bases. I don't think I'm going to use this. I'll exchange it for a normal base, a 50 or 60 millimeter normal uh, unlipped base. And the rest of the pieces come in this little bag. We have a pan with a sword. We have a tail. What else we got? Various horns. And a head, of course. Uh, right, this is the head. And we'll have to see how everything goes together. I mean, I mean there has to be a second hand somewhere. Let me open this up. Uh, so I know I've got all the pieces. Oh, right. There, there's an, an empty hand here, and a hand with a sword. Tail, small horns, small horns, small horns, large horns. I suppose the two largest horns are for the top of the head. They're, they're, oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, something like that. We'll see. I will figure it out. Or die trying. Anyway, that was uh, my ideas for what's next. Let's uh, look at some stats and new arrivals. And what do I have to show you today? Well, I got another package from Reaper, this one with more minis in it. Uh, more normal sized minis, so, so there's more of them. And again, there's a lot of Christmas themed minis. We have the, the pack reindeer here, again in a blister that's come loose. So I can show you it like this. Oh, and his head is separate as well. Um, what else is Christmassy here? Um, oh, th this was the actual, um, the Christmas Mocking Beast was the actual uh, sort of, um, what's it called? The bonus mini for, for ordering during the 12 days, of, the promotional mini, that's it. And it's, it's, it's a mimic that's taken the shape of a Christmas present. I also got Nick the Christmas Rogue here. Um, he's hidden behind the uh, the base, so you can't tell what it looks like, unfortunately. Uh, we have another sort of holiday mini, the Halloween Knight, who, you know, with his pumpkin head, you can see why he's the Halloween mini. Uh, and then just a couple of guys. We have this, another pirate, carrying uh, a chest of pieces of eight, I suppose. And he's holding a really, really bent sword. I might, I might just toss this guy into the mix very soon to paint up. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, because I've done so many pirates recently, uh, most of the ones I had. Uh, and finally, the final small blister is a new pack of townsfolk, the kids. Like, they're adventuring kids. Who, they, a, a wannabe fighter here and a, uh, a wannabe wizard. 
And finally, I got one more of these box sets that are going out of style, apparently. The Townsfolk 1, the village of Culhaven. Uh, they never made a Townsfolk 2 box. They seem to be going, stopping making the box sets. And as it turns out, that's probably just as well. Because the thing is, whenever I, I've noticed something about Reaper, whenever I order something big like this, the package always gets caught in customs and I have to pay import duties on it. And that means that the savings I made on in getting the box set instead of buying all these individually disappears in taxes. So I just might as well not have bothered. And well, the good thing about this is that it reduces my my um, my urge to splurge on on getting the few remaining box sets before they go out of stock. I can just I I, I can just tell myself that I'm not going to save any money anyway, so I might as well leave it alone. Because all those minis that are in the box sets, well, except for the special ones like the big dinosaurs, but these sets with ordinary 28 mil minis in it, you can always get all of these individually. In any case, it's not like they're they are disappearing. Um, and why why am I talking about this? Well, because of again because of the promotion, um, where they have a, a new unique mini each month this year for for some sort of uh, anniversary reasons, and um, it it means that I'm not being being um, tempted to to try to get those minis by buying the box sets because I don't need the box sets and so if I I don't I, I can wait until there's a promotional mini that I really 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 want like I said I didn't want the first one the Re the Grim Reaper uh, and and the wizard this month is well he's kind of cool but nah nah I don't need him he's he's not that necessary for my collection We'll see what they offer in March. Anyway, that was this week's update. We'll see if uh, I make, might make a midweek update this week. We'll see. It depends on, on what my uh, schedule looks like. But I'll see you then, whenever that is, either in the middle of the week or next Monday. Until then, have a nice week. I'm Doc Eon, and I'm signing off.